We begin by using a pneumatic can crusher. This gives a consistent can crush, which makes it much easier to feed the cans into the melting furnace without having to remove the lid. Next, we use a propane torch to help us light the melting furnace for the first time. As the crucible approaches 1220 degrees Fahrenheit, the cans begin melting pretty rapidly. It's important that you don't let the crucible get too hot or it will cause oxidization, which results in a lot of dross at the end. As the cans melt down, we continue to throw more cans and pull tabs into the molten aluminum. It's really important to keep an eye on the temperature as it can quickly go above 1220 degrees. Next, we start taking the dross off the top, which exposes the molten aluminum underneath. Dross is the impurities and oxidization from the melting process. After melting approximately 120 to 130 aluminum cans, we remove the crucible and take it over to prepare to pour. Next, we pour the molten aluminum into a large cast iron mold. Although we will make two attempts, it's always best to have a single continuous pour. It's also very important that you leave a little bit of the molten metal in the bottom of the crucible. This makes it melt things much faster when you get started again. Next, we will allow the cast iron mold to cool off a little bit so we can get the ingot out. This took a little bit longer than our graphite molds. Once the ingot is out, the quench begins. As you can see, the ice quench rapidly cools the bar off. Next, it's time to put it on the scale. This weighs in at 1 pound, 11.6 ounces. It took about 110 cans or so to make this bar. Next is a drawer full of the bars we've made in previous lives. It's about 25 cans per bar. Thanks for making our lives such a success. Please subscribe to the channel so you can be notified next time we go live. We look forward to answering your questions then.